Wir sitzen hier mit Marit Larsen, vier Tage vor der Echo-Verleihung 2010. Marit ist mehrfach nominiert, zum Beispiel in der Kategorie Künstlerin, International Rock Pop. Marit, you're nominated in a category and you're up against names like Beyoncé, Whitney Houston, Lady Gaga and Pink. Do you even feel at home between all of these names? I still have to laugh when I hear that. I think my name stands out so comically. <laughs> But I mean, of course, it's a great honor to be nominated. Um, the other category that I'm nominated in now is also um, with Lady Gaga. So, you know, I have absolutely no chance of winning, but I will be celebrating the nominations. So when you have time to think about Thursday night, what's going on in your head? Are you secretly rehearsing acceptance speeches already? You know, I am generally a very positive person, but I don't think I'm going to win this. So I, I don't even have a, a speech prepared. But what I do know is that it's going to be a great celebration of Uh, the past six months that have been an adventure uh, for me in my life and um, I will be celebrating it with some people that I really love so I think it's going to be a great night no matter what putting on a nice dress and getting to be part of the Echoes for the very first time in my life You're also nominated in the category Best Newcomer International, which sounds like you're new to the game, but that's not true. You've been famous in Norway and in other countries uh, for a long time, also as a solo artist, but also with your group M2M. After all this time, do you feel like you sorted out the music business by now? Do you know when you write a successful song? Do you know what makes a song successful? Do you know when you write a hit song? There is no way to know. And I mean... I have so many songwriter friends who dream their whole lives of getting the attention for their songs that I have been getting. Um, they also write, you know, songs that really deserve the attention. But there's also this, I would say, 50% of luck that you have to have um, to succeed. But um, it is, of course, overwhelming to see that one of my songs that I wrote um, in, in my attic at home, like all of my other songs, end up going from um, not being a known artist at all to being number one in just a matter of months. Right. Playing sold-out shows in Germany now for the second round, I think, in, in a few months, how would you describe German audiences, or is that even possible? I'm falling in love with the German audience. I mean, on my first ever concert tour of Germany in um, in November, 18 out of 20 shows were sold out. But I was playing pretty small venues. But at the same time, it was my first ever ever tour here. Um, and now I'm getting to go back already just a few months later. And um, the places are still filling up, although they're quite uh, a bit bigger this time. Um, my audience here is very attentive. They really listen when I have something to say. Um, listen when I play and then are not afraid to show enthusiasm between the songs. So for me, it's just, I mean, every night we keep saying, this is the greatest show of this tour. <laughs> it's like a constant celebration. I think it's really amazing that when you talk about your success in your career, your eyes really still sparkle and you really seem genuinely moved by everything. Yeah, How did you? I am. <laughs> How do you manage to, to stay so humbled by it and so impressible? I am very humble to be able to do my favorite thing every day of the year, and I, I'm getting to do that because the music that I do still write for myself, I never attended a songwriting school, I don't have uh, the golden ticket, can actually have something to say for other people, can um, have something, um, have a special place in their lives. I think that's a powerful thing, and um, most people never get to experience it. It's nice you don't take it for granted. I think that's a very dangerous thing. You come from a very musical family. Your father is playing in the Oslo Philharmonic Orchestra. Your mom is a music teacher. So that could mean two things. One, you grew up in a really creative, beautiful, fairy tale musical family. Two, you grew up in a very demanding, ambitious family <laughs> with lots of tears practicing the piano when you were young. Well, I don't think either is really correct. Um, what I do know is that my house was always filled with music. Uh, for the first few years of my life, I, I only listened to classical music, which I think had a great um, uh, impact on my, my melodic sense. Um, I did start playing the piano because my mom was teaching her students at home, and I was actually my earliest childhood memory is sitting beneath her grand piano when she was teaching. Um, it's a wonder that I still have my hearing <laughs> intact. Um, but also, you know, seeing my, my father uh, come home from tour, you know, standing in the arrivals hall at the airport 
waiting for him, you know, thinking that he'd been playing night after night for hundreds of people and wondering what that had been like. Of course, that had something to do with my longing for, for music and being able to do it. Um, but the fact that it's become a thing that I can actually do for a living now and not having to do something on the side, I mean, that's even almost too big for me to fathom, I think. Thanks so much for talking to us, and good luck on Thursday. Thank you.